So in my last upload, we looked at a selection of backmarkers from the start of the turbo hybrid era in 2014 up until 2021, and their relative qualifying pace compared to the Q2 cutoff time. And what we're going to do in today's episode is we're going to take a look at a list of backmarkers once again from 2014 to present day, but we're going to look at their race pace this time in relation to the points paying position of P10. And jumping straight into it, we have the Haas of 2021, which was last in 18 of 22 events, excluding the drivers who ended up DNFing. So of all of the races that actually finished the Grand Prix and got to the end, the Haas was slowest in 18 of them. The italicized races at the bottom are those races in which they weren't the slowest, and then ones with an asterisk by them are rain-affected races. So let's just briefly go over exactly what I've calculated for today's episode, pulling up Bahrain of 2021. So I've taken the highest finishing Haas driver of the 2021 Bahrain Grand Prix, and I've averaged every single one of their lap times to end up with a 1 minute 41.831. Then conversely, I've taken the driver who finished in P10 and I've averaged their lap times and we end up with a 1 minute 40.189. Now this is every single lap time. Lap one, pit stops, safety cars, everything. All of the laps have been averaged. Then a difference is calculated in time, which is then converted to a percentage, which for Bahrain was 1.61%. So the Haas of 2021 was 1.61% slower than the points paying position of P10. Then this process has been repeated for all other races of this season, and we end up plotting on a graph that looks a little like this, with the grey bars outlined in white being races where Mick Schumacher was the fastest, and then the dark grey bordered lines are where Nikita Mazepin was the highest finishing Haas driver. Belgium has not been included as we didn't really have a race there, and then both Haas's DNF'd in Saudi Arabia. So averaging every single one of these percentages, we end up with Haas being 1.59% behind points. And excluding the five rain affected races of this year, we actually end up with Haas being 1.51% behind the points paying positions. Where they were not the slowest in three events, Azerbaijan, Hungary, and Saudi Arabia, with Schumacher being fastest 15 times, and they never finished in the points. So from Haas of 2021, we move to a joint backmarker teams of 2020, Williams and Haas again, who were slowest in six of 17 events, excluding DNFs. So starting with Williams and plotting on their percentage behind the points or ahead of the points respectively, we end up with a graph that looks a little something like this. And averaging out each of their percentages, they were 0.56% behind the points, but then excluding the two rain affected races of Hungary and Turkey, they were 0.57 behind, so it actually went up, they were further behind the points. Then pulling up the same for Haas, we actually see in the first couple of races they were a lot closer to the points, but then nearer the end of the season, compared to Williams where they got closer, Haas got further away. And averaging all of the data for Haas, they were 0.42% behind the points, and then excluding the rainy races, this went up to 0.48%. So across the whole season, it was the Haas of 2020 that was closer to the points than the Williams. With Williams never actually achieving a point in 2020, with Haas scoring the twice. Where they were P10 in Hungary, and they were just inside the points in P9 in Germany. But then heading away from 2020 and heading down to 2019, where it was the Williams that was once again the slowest backmarker team of that year, last in 16 of 21 events when excluding DNFs. And averaging each of these percentage values, we end up with Williams being 1.38% behind the points, and then excluding the one rain affected session of Germany, they were 1.45% behind the points. Where Williams scored just the once in the hands of Robert Kubica in that rain affected Germany session where he finished P10, with Russell in the white ahead of Kubica in the blue, 17-3. So from 2019, we'll now head to 2018, which saw once again the Williams be the slowest team of that year, last in 13 of 21 events when excluding the DNFs. However, they were in the points twice in this year, Azerbaijan and Italy. Averaging all of this data for Williams, they were 0.64% behind P10, and excluding the rain affected session of Germany where both drivers ended up retiring, they were again just 0.64% behind the points. 
where they scored just the twice in Azerbaijan and Italy, with Sirotkin actually ahead of Lance Stroll 11-9 every time they finished a race. Then from 2018, we'll delve down to 2017, which sees the Sauber last in 11 of 20 events when the DNFs were excluded. And once again, similarly to the Williams of 2018, they were in the points twice in Spain and Azerbaijan. Averaging all of these data values, however, we end up with Sauber being 1.02% behind P10, but excluding the three rain-affected sessions of China, Britain, and Singapore, they were actually 0.84% behind P10. Where they scored twice in this year, with Verline ahead of Ericsson, 12-7. And then from 2017, we take a look at 2016, which saw the Manor being last in 16 of 21 events when excluding the DNFs. And similarly to the last couple of backmarker teams, they have scored just the once in Austria. Averaging out all of the data values though, they're 1.42% behind the points, and excluding the rain-affected sessions of Monaco and Britain and also Brazil, they were 1.46% behind the points. Where Manor scored just the once opportunistically in Austria, with Harry Anto being ahead of Verline on one occasion, Ocon being ahead of Verline on six occasions, and Verline being ahead of all of them across the season, 13 occasions. So from 2016, we'll now delve to 2015, which saw the Marussia last in all 18 events that they entered, as due to money troubles, they didn't actually attend the Australian Grand Prix of 2015. And averaging out all of these percentage values, we end up with Marussia being 2.78% behind the points paying positions. And excluding the rain affected session of Britain and also the US, we end up with them being 2.94% behind the points. With Marussia unfortunately not scoring any points in 2015, with Will Stevens ahead seven times, Alexander Rossi ahead the four, and Roberto Meri ahead seven times. With Marussia sadly not scoring any points in 2015, with Will Stevens being the lead driver seven times, Alexander Rossi four, and Roberto Meri also seven. And then finally we'll take a look at 2014, which sees the Caterham last in seven of 17 events that they entered, as they failed to attend the US or Brazilian Grand Prix of that year. And averaging out all of their percentage values, we see that they're 1.67% behind the points, and then excluding the two rain-affected sessions of Hungary and Japan of that year, this value rose to 1.70% behind the points. And Caterham, like Marussia, never scored any points in this backmarker year. With Kamui Kobayashi being the lead Caterham driver on seven occasions, the same as Marcus Ericsson. So there is a detailed look of the backmarker teams and their race pace in relation to P10 across all of the turbo hybrid years since 2014. But what we're going to do now is we're going to order each of these teams from the teams that were closest to the points paying position of P10 and then the teams that were the furthest away from this points paying position. So topping this list we actually have the Haas of 2020, slowest in 35.3% of the races entered and 0.48% off of the points paying positions. We then get the Williams of 2020, slowest in the same amount of races, but 0.57% off of the points. Then comes the Williams of 2018, slowest in 61.9% of the races, and 0.64% off of the points. Then it's the Sauber of 2017, slowest in 55% of the races, but 0.84% off of the points. Then comes the third Williams of 2019, slowest in 76.2% of the races entered, and a whopping 1.45% off of the points, almost double that of the Sauber's pace. Then we get the Manor of 2016, slowest in the same percent as the Williams of 2019, and just a little bit further off of the points, with 1.46%. We then get the most recent year of Haas 2021, slowest in 81.8% of the races and 1.41% off of the points. Then in P2, we end up with Caterham, slowest in 41% of the races entered and 1.7% off of the points. And then unsurprisingly, as much like the qualifying video just before, we end up with the Marussia of 2015 being slowest in 100% of the races that they entered, and they were a whopping 2.94% off of the points that year. 
Now this is a fairly similar order to what we saw in the qualifying video, comparing very similar backmarker teams. If you would like to go and compare the orders, then please go check out that qualifying video in a card in the corner. But do you think come the new regulation change we're going to see a new team top this list or even enter this list at all? Do you think there are going to be a backmarker teams and how far off the pace do you think they're going to be? And remember just before we go, if you do have any video suggestions of your own, then please let me know in the comments down below as I am all ears and I would love to hear your suggestions for new videos. But that's all I've got for you today guys, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.